What's good everyone? Just been getting at it for the day. And I wanted to speak to you and ask you the question of what is love and affection to you? How do you share your love and affection? To me, love and affection is something that should be shared in a way that is beneficial to the relationship, that is adding a healthy contribution to the relationship. Love and affection is more than just cuddles, gifts, you know, sweet talk and all the rest of it. Love and affection also gives clear guidance, gives peace of mind, is there for us when we need it. It is also something that helps discipline us and also helps create a better version of us. Let me elaborate. So if you think about the way so many of us show love, it is within this coddling way. Good boy, good girl, treats, I love my son, I love my daughter, I love you, blah, blah, blah. All the rest of it, the hugs and cuddles, toys, treats, as I was saying, yada, yada. If you are to love in that way and that way only, you need to understand that that is just a very surface, selfish way of loving. Every, it's just, it's a very surface based way of loving. We need to understand it in a way of, if we are to share true love to the other side of the relationship, whether that be human or dogs or animal, whatever it may be, we are going to want to fulfill the other side of the relationship. We are going to want to do something that is beneficial for the other side to help create growth, to help create change for the better, and also in a way that is going to help us want to give the best version of ourselves to be of service to that relationship. And by no means is this any type of fucking sim shit, no, I want to give you the best. No, 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 we want to give the best truly. And that comes with being able to challenge oneself. That comes with being able to challenge the other side as well. So don't get it twisted. And when I say give the best, you need to be able to be selfish to a point so that you can be selfless. So as a father with their youth or whatever the case may be with their family unit, don't you want to be able to give the best version of yourself to your family? Whether you have kids or not, don't you want to be able to give the best version of yourself to those around you? Don't you want to be able to show up in a way where each and every single person there, including yourself, can say, fuck yeah, that's my man. Fuck yeah, that's my brother, that's my boy. Fuck yeah, I'm proud of this man. Watch him go, watch him do his thing. Don't you want to be able to show up in such a way? Instead of providing your people with a half-assed, sloppy, fat, malnourished, bitch-ass version of you, weak version of you, that lives their existence within excusing, justifying and rationalizing and negotiating with all the fucking reasons why you're not adhering to the things that you should be adhering to. It's the same thing when we talk about our dogs. Our dogs are social and pack animals that run under social and pack hierarchy by instinctual ways of being. So understanding this, we need to be able to give them a competent leader something that is outside of just generalized training. We need to be able to conduct ourselves in a way where that dog is going to have the utmost faith, trust and respect in our guidance and direction and who we are to be able to lead competently once again so that the dog has that instinctual trust and respect in what we're asking of it and our abilities to be able to control the situation and the environment. Because if we're not in control of ourselves mentally and emotionally, how are we ever going to share this with the animal? How are we ever going to show the animal that we are a competent leader if we're living within instabilities? And we also need to understand that the dog needs more than this coddling, damaging way of love to fulfill it. The dog also needs its needs met as an individual for an animal for the living being that it is and that is going to come with outlets 
guidance, direction, discipline, and being able to fulfill it for what it is as an individual and as a living being. The dog needs that sense of adventure. It's got a mind of its own. This is not a house ornament. This is not a fucking teddy bear for you to love up on in whichever way you see fit. That only makes you feel good about the relationship and what you want out of that relationship. How fucking selfish can you be to actually think in such a manner? Your dog needs outlets. It's got a body. It's got a mind of its own. It needs to exert that pent up energy. It needs a sense of adventure. It needs new environmental settings. Let me put it in terms for the fucking idiots out there that do not understand this. Let me say, I'll take you out of your home environment, put you in another home environment where another species has control over your life in every way, shape or form that you can imagine, just as we do when it comes to our dogs. But don't worry, you're going to have some toys. They're going to cuddle you and all the rest of it, even though you may not feel comfortable all the time. But you're going to have no sense of true belonging or direction set ahead of you so that you don't know what it is they actually want from you. And to top it off, even though you may have all that coddling bullshit type of love, you're not actually gonna have access to get off property and do the things that make you you as an individual. Now you tell me how long is it going to be before you start exhibiting behavioral issues? Before that depression, before that anxiety, before that uncertainty and all that head noise creeps up on you. How long is it gonna be? Hmm? You need to be able to think of it like that. This is why that coddling way of loving is so damaging, especially when it comes to our dogs. And the same thing goes back to if you're a parent. If you're a child, you need to be able to look at your parent in a way where you have that utter and utmost faith and trust and respect within their decisions and their guidance and direction. Because if not, you're going to be able to put yourself in a predicament where you lead yourself astray. And I know that happens to a lot of us on a day-to-day -day basis. But when we can start seeing clearly and we can start holding ourselves to these better standards, we lower these chances dramatically. And we actually show that we can lead by example without just talking shit. As the sign says behind me, love is truth, not lies. Don't you want to be able to lead in such a way? Don't you want your people and your animals to be able to have that trust in you and what you're asking from them? Don't you want to be able to give them that peace of mind and not look at you and second guess you? Second guess what you're about? Second guess who you are and what you're capable of? Even with our children, if we love them in a way that is over coddling, I know this is going to hurt some people, but it's the fucking truth. All that shit does is fucking damage them. You need to be able to give clear guidance and direction as I've just been speaking about. You need to be able to conduct yourself in a way where they have that trust, that faith within who you are, what you're about, what you're asking from them and the way you lead. You need to be able to show them a way that is going to help them flourish and succeed within their own life. And if this is upsetting you, please explain to me how your coddling ways, over coddling ways, are ever going to help someone flourish and succeed within their own life. All you're doing is keeping them away from the challenges that they need to be able to adhere to within their day-to-day -day life to become better. And we need to be able to fulfill them in a way that nature intended, whether that be for the animal, or for the human and nature intended us to be able to face adversity and to be able to push through it to become better to become smarter to become more resilient to become a better version of ourselves we need to understand this in a way so that we can fulfill each other in a healthy manner and so that we stop loving each other in such selfish ways because let's be real if you're sugarcoating shit 
If you're giving them half truth, it's all a fucking lie because it ain't the fucking truth. If it ain't the truth, it ain't real. If it ain't the truth, it ain't honest. You're living within bullshit, therefore your relationship is built within bullshit. Have a think about that. I hope it helps. Peace. Yeah.